I'm Peter Van Rysdam, and today we're going to be talking with Don Pizet about the state of the IT job marketplace and what some of the top jobs are both in programming and the, on the IT side. That all starts right after this on the IT Pro TV podcast. All right, welcome to the IT Pro TV podcast. I'm your host, Peter Van Rysdam, and with me is Don Bazette. And Don, we've kind of switched roles today. Normally, you're the one doing the intros and everything, but today we're, we're going to be asking you some questions. So first of all, how are you doing? I am doing great. And, you know, I'm, I'm kind of glad to relinquish the role of, of host because it, uh, uh, you know, it takes a lot of effort, really, and, and I'm, I'm not about that. So, <laughs> well, Perfect. I am looking forward to the effort. So uh, today, as we said in the open, we're going to be talking kind of about, about the job market. And, and, and started this, some of this start, kind of came out because uh, CompTIA just released a survey talking about um, the state of, of IT jobs uh, really in the last month. So we're filming this here in October of 2017. And uh, the study, I think, is looking back at, at September. And uh, we saw some interesting growth and, uh, and some interesting stats we want to talk about. So um, let's, let's just jump right into it. I think uh, the, the big big thing we saw it was just a lot of growth and i don't think that's a big surprise to to either of us but kind of being in this tech training side and and uh, and helping people find those jobs it, it's certainly something that's good for, good to see for us you know it's been a bit of a like a political hot button especially with the whole h1b visa thing where where they're saying look there are unemployed Americans that are looking for jobs and they can't find jobs. And here we are bringing in people from other countries. And the reality is that that job market is growing. Uh, and, and, you know, you need trained individuals to fill that gap. And, and it's one of the things we talk about at IT Pro TV a lot is how, man, you really, you, you got to go to college. You've got to, to start learning. You got to get certifications and get into that field because the jobs are there. And so that's what CompTIA is really showing us, um, you know, in the report, which I've, I've got, uh, I don't know, around here somewhere, uh, right here. <laughs> and so, so they pushed out this report, and basically what it's showing is from, from their results, you know, what they've found. And if you're not familiar with CompTIA, it's the Computer Technology and Industry Association, and they have members that are, are companies like Microsoft and HP, Dell, uh, Apple. They're all a part of this, this uh, trade organization, and they collect data, information on what's going on out there in the world. And what they found, as you kind of look around, is that uh, you get growth that it, it, it kind of kind of fluctuates, right? And so they've got like IT occupation employment right here. And they're showing how uh, this data, you know, just month after month, sometimes it goes up, you've got these kind of inclines, and then it starts to come back down again. And what we're seeing is that in September, we actually saw a pretty pretty giant amount of growth, and that's following August and following July. It's this consistent trend of up, 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 up. And it's not it's not always like that. That If we start looking at things from a like a uh, an annual perspective, annually, it's actually, it, it's up, but not as up significantly as it just happens to be in the last three months. But it is a good bit of growth. Yeah, and, what, and what's interesting to me is, is you know, you're, you're everyone kind of expects we're going to see a rise because there's just more and more um, computers and, and different kinds of things in people's offices that they have to work with and understand how to use. And so there, there's really an, an IT job, whether it's a, a full-time job or, or some of uh, a person's job in, in every business now. So that's not really what's unexpected, but uh, just the the amount of the increase, um, I, I think it was 100,000, uh, just over 100,000 new uh, positions added in that last month. And if you look back at the, to the beginning of the graph, I, uh, I think it was about a year and a half, um, yeah, it was uh, about 500,000 uh, new jobs added. So, Don, do you see anything that might have have caused that besides just kind of the the overall trend? I mean, there's a lot of cybersecurity talk right now. Yeah, there is, and, and that that is kind of the interesting part here is that uh, there's a lot in this graph that you don't necessarily pick up on, and I'm glad they split it up into two, but if we look at it, let me, let me go uh, like full screen on this thing. Uh, there's actually two parts, right? We've got IT sector employment and IT occupation employment. And if you look at the IT occupation employment, see how it goes up and down and up and down? We, we get a lot of fluctuation there. But if you look at the IT sector employment, it is almost steady growth, right? And that part where it says IT sector that's including a lot more than just people that we would typically label as an as an IT like a, an IT guy, right? And, and it would, it's not necessarily a guy, right? It could be man, woman, whatever. But uh, it used to be that if you were a systems administrator or a network administrator or a developer, that you were considered an IT person. But the reality is, there's a lot of jobs in an IT department. There's project managers. There's 
Uh, you know, there's a receptionist. There's all these other people that are part of that IT machinery that are, are really important to keeping that going. And that's where we're seeing a lot of the steady growth. And with the uh, security, the cybersecurity industry specifically, you typically, you need internal security people, but you can't, you can't trust your own people to do your own security audit month after month after month. And so we're leveraging other companies outside, you know, contractors to come in, and they're the ones who are scanning our systems and evaluating. And so those contractors, that's not a job where we've hired them full time. It doesn't reflect on these job reports. If they work for a, a pen test, like a, a official pen testing company, then their job would be reflected there. But a lot of times they're contractors. And we don't see that here, but the bureaucracy of, of employing them and using them, that's what starts to impact this. And so we see growth that way. It's, it's really in interesting how the IT industry has grown so much. And the, 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 the joke I used to make was, you know, in the, in the 1980s, companies didn't have IT departments. They had a Xerox copy guy. And whoever the copy repair person was, that was their IT department. And then in the 90s, that started to change, right? We started getting actual IT departments. And now it was whoever in the office managed to clean a virus off their computer the first time. That was their IT person. <laughs> but now, now it's critical infrastructure. And we've got CIOs and IT managers. We've got CISOs and, and all the other different roles that fall inside of that IT department. And it, it, it equals growth. Yeah, it reminds me, my brother works at an air conditioning company, uh, and, and he, you know, had to be the one to go out and, uh, and decide who their ISP was uh, 10, 15 years ago as, a, as the office manager. And because of that, he's essentially become the IT guy now because, well, he's the guy that started the computer network, so let's go ask him about these things. And it's not something he's, uh, you know, trained for or was in the job description at the beginning, but it's kind of what that job has become. And uh, yeah, I think back to uh, just last week here, we, we shot a video about uh, the role of women in IT. And so we went around and interviewed a lot of the, the women that work here at IT Pro TV. And what's funny is we, we talked to uh, women in, in the marketing department, um, you know, PR, design, uh, graphic design, all things that 10 years ago, 15 years ago, these weren't tech jobs, but I'm hard pressed to think of a job now at our company that isn't a tech job. You know, everyone's got a computer in front of them. Everyone is doing their job in a technical way with the use of, of software that helps them or things like that. So it, it's really tough to delineate now what's what's an IT job and what isn't. So, you know, thinking of it that way, let, let's look at this again. I want to zoom in on a bit of this report. So uh, they've got the IT sector employment breakout, right? Uh, and they break it out by kind of components. So if you're in the telecom industry or if you're doing data processing, uh, other information services like, uh, you know, some Google or even fantasy sports leagues would fall into that, uh, IT and software services, they're kind of dividing it up, right? And you'll notice these like massive job areas, IT and software services. It is such a vague term, right? Telecom it means you work for one of the phone companies. It's yeah. easy. You work for Verizon or AT&T, uh, you know, one of those guys. But IT and software services is so big. Uh, you know, you, IT Pro TV, we, we count as IT and software services. Uh, so it is a, a massive area with a huge amount of employment, and it does incorporate a lot of people that don't necessarily fall into that. Uh, and if you look at where the job gains are, you'll see where telecom is actually on the decline, that the phone companies are, are having to kind of change the way they do their, their business. And that's really impacting things, which is kind of funny because smartphones are becoming people's standard interface to technology. Uh, but when you look at the top, five IT occupation job postings, right? So if you're a job seeker and you're looking for a job in one of these five, you're the most likely to find one. Uh, and you'll see software developers and computer systems analysts and web developers, right? Three job roles there that really fall on kind of the programming side. And then you've got system engineers, architects, and computer user support specialists. That's all stuff that fell on the system administration side. Those five job postings, that really hasn't changed much over the years. The order has changed a little bit, but all in all, those are the same five jobs that have been in the most demand for a long time. But there's no security analyst there, which I think is really funny, but uh, security analysts are really important, but you don't need as many of them as you do developers. A company might need 40 developers and four security officers. So, you know, that, that's kind of where that balance is. We see the most growth in security, but they didn't make the chart here because, you know, in the general picture, they account for a, a smaller portion of the employees. Yeah, and if you can keep that, that chart up, uh, it, what's interesting to me, uh, can we scroll back over to the, to the other side of the, 
Uh, oh, I could if I was a technology person. <laughs> what, what's interesting to me looking at that is that it's no longer the, the manufacturing side of, of IT and, and the computer hardware that's the, the biggest employer. It, it go down, goes down to the, the software and the developers and, and the people maintaining those things as you kind of see software as a service, uh, you know, to kind of taking over um, a, a lot of things that you might have it physically in your office uh, before. But um, like you said, cybersecurity is, is a huge one that you – don't see a lot of on there, and and I was reading uh, Isaka, um, who I, I think we're going to interview on an upcoming podcast here. Uh, they predict that uh, there will be a gap of two million cybersecurity workers by by 2019. And um, is, is that where you see the the biggest jump over the next? I don't know. I don't know if you want to look at five years, yeah. two years, yeah. but. Uh, Let's you know. Let let's apply the uh, they're taking our jobs mentality to this, <laughs> right? That uh, you've got the cloud yeah. and and all this the the physical manufacturing that we you know we used to buy Dell servers and HP servers and, and implement these things that used to happen all the time, and now you're like, well, I, people just do it in the cloud. We don't do that anymore, and, and they're taking our jobs. Well, it's not that the jobs are going away; is that they're being changed, they're being replaced. And so, in the past, you might have worked for. Uh, a company that purchased a ton of servers, and so your job was installing these servers. Well, now that that's gone to the cloud, they're having to buy the servers, mm -hmm. and so yeah, you know, you might not you might not need to do server installations at your company anymore. But if you went to work for one of the cloud providers, you would. It's not that the servers disappeared; it's just a different company that's implementing them. Those jobs are still there, and so we're seeing that with security, where there's certain jobs that aren't really required anymore, like. Um, uh, SAN, like storage area networks, right? Uh, it used to be pretty commonplace for large companies to have dedicated personnel just for setting up a SAN. Well, if you've moved into the cloud, you don't have a SAN to configure anymore. It's all, the, the storage is all software defined. It's all managed for you. But that doesn't mean you don't necessarily need those employees. Now they need to transition into that role of securing your infrastructure or managing databases that are ever growing. Databases are way harder to manage today than they used to be because of their massive size and retrieving that data. So I think that it, did you ever read that book? This is going to sound like a total tangent here. Uh, did you ever read that book, Who Moved My Cheese? I did, yeah, yeah, a long time ago. So it was a, it was one of those like self help motivational books, and I, I don't know, it was maybe a hundred pages long. You, you could yeah, read it in one night. It was not a big deal, but the idea was that uh, if you learned a skill set, and then you just stopped and stagnated, and the world around you changed, you became obsolete, and you had a choice: you could either change with it, or you could become obsolete. And that's how a lot of this stuff is: is that the the job you held might not be relevant anymore. And, you know, if you were a punch card operator in the 70s or a COBOL programmer in the 80s, today it's, it's harder to find work. And I know there's those, those uh, yeah. couple exceptions on the COBOL side. But, uh, but if you adapt and say, all right, I'm, I'm going to embrace cloud technology. I'm going to learn that. Or, uh, you know, I, I want to become a developer or, or whatever it is. Uh, right now on the system administration side, I know some people are worried, like, ah, you know, who, who's installing operating systems anymore? The cloud already does it for you. Well, you know what? Learn, learn Ansible. Learn Chef or Puppet, the automation utilities for deploying these on a large scale. That's in demand, and that's system administration straight up. So the the, the need is there. Yeah, and that I, I have a marketing background, and so that makes me think of um, you know lessons we had in school about um, marketing myopia, which is basically where you're saying if a company is looking at itself as one thing and not looking at that bigger picture, um, they're going to miss out on opportunities, or they're going to get um, you know kind of rolled over. And, and so uh, I think a good example that, uh, that, that they always used in that was, um, let, let's take um, AT&T, for example. So that's a company that if you looked at it 100 years ago, you'd say this, this is a, a phone company. They, they're, they're setting up these lines. This is where I go. This is where I get my phone. But if they, if they looked at themselves as that, they'd be out of business now. And so they look at themselves as a communications company. And so they're ready to evolve with that next kind of communications. And, and you know, so now it's, well, that's where I get my, my internet access from. That's where I get my television and my content from. Same thing with um, uh, train companies. If you, uh, you know, that was the way you got across the country 100 years ago. And uh, you didn't see those companies say, I am a transportation company because that's why you don't have, uh, you know, Union Pacific 
airlines now because that <laughs> that's a train company and they said this is what we are and this is how people are going to do it no one's going to want to get in those crazy planes and as a result you know they're essentially out of business or changed very much um, versus uh, what we see today but the same thing's definitely true in these kind of businesses I, i've read a couple articles i was telling you about earlier getting uh prepared for this podcast talking about ai and and robotics and people look at that saying oh this robot's going to take my job well if you let it, it, it certainly will, but make your job to be understanding how that robot works. And because someone has to service that someone has to program that. And, you know, even if you're at a job, that's not a tech job and, and it's, uh, you know, you're, you're putting widgets together and the robot's going to do that. Well, someone's got to show that robot how to do it and, and watch all those robots and, and, you know, security and, and all those kinds of things. So, um, you know, I think that that's something that a lot of people aren't, aren't maybe thinking about that far in the future. You know who, who's actually been hit by this really hard is the cable industry, right? Think about the, the cable guy that in the, the 90s or even the early 2000s, if I got cable service, that was television, and they would send a tech to your, your house. And the tech, all they did was run cable. That's all they had to do. They, they'd run RG, not, uh, what was it, RG 59 or, or whatever was the cable. They yeah. would run into your house. They'd do some RF jacks every here and there. All they had to know was how to crimp a cable, and that was it. And, and they, they couldn't even do that right most times. So <laughs> <laughs> that was what they had to do. Well, now most cable companies aren't TV channels anymore or TV companies. Now they're service providers, Internet service providers, right? I, I get cable Internet, and I rarely watch TV. So now when they have an installer, they come out to your house – it's not just running some RG6 or RG59 anymore. Now they've got to deal with, with Cat6 cable and hooking up a router and, and a cable modem, and they've actually got to understand what TCP IP is and, and how addressing works and DHCP. You know, they have to know a lot more. Their, their trade has become a lot more challenging, and some of them haven't adapted, and so when you get that cable guy that comes out and screws everything up, you're like, all right, well, there's somebody who hasn't adapted. Um, but the others are, are quickly learning, like, hey – I've got to know how to set up a Wi-Fi network. I've got to have a much more robust skill set to do a job that didn't need that before. It's just an evolving workplace. And, and we see that really in every career. But I think cable companies are where that's really, really evident. Yeah, and it's funny because you could, as a cable company, say, well, I don't want to get into uh, giving people Internet access because then they're going to be able to get to Netflix and my competitors. But you're not – you're not a, a provider of just entertainment services. You're a provider of networking, and, and uh, whether that is, is bringing cable, or bringing internet, or whatever comes next, you know, fiber and all those kinds of things, that um, that's how you've got to think of yourself. And, and that same thinking that applies to a company has got to apply to individuals. But um, let's maybe kind of switch gears here and talk a little bit about, we've, we've talked about what we see as maybe some of those roles in the future um, with kind of cybersecurity maybe being uh, one of the top ones. But I uh, found, uh, found an article um, on WP Engine talking about what are the top 10 programming languages that people <laughs> should go out and learn. And I will say they, they use the, the term programming languages a, a little broadly, um, I think. But, uh, you know, we've got, we've got Dev Pro TV here. We're, we're um, you know, seeing that, that even in my job in marketing, I've got to understand, you know, some, some basic languages and, and, you know, I think that's just going to be more and more as time goes on. So uh, what do you think is number one on the list of, of the, <laughs> the programming language that anyone should go out and learn? This is tough because, like, every month I see an article that says, you know, language XYZ is now the greatest, it's the fastest. And, and Google, they're the ones who kill me because Google comes up with a new programming language every month. And so one month it's, boy, you've got to use AngularJS. It's amazing. <laughs> you, you've got to jump into this one. And then uh, and then it's Go. you got to use Go and Golang. And then a month later, it's like, oh, Angular 2.0, which, by the way, is not compatible with Angular 1.0. God forbid we did that. So um, I'm curious how bad I'll do on this. But it, if I had to guess... Remember, I said it's broad. I said broad. the definition is, is, uh, is very broad. All right. So um, I, I can think of, like, if I wanted to recommend somebody to start learning the languages I would start with, but if they're saying to get a job, uh, I, I would... Probably guess that I, I'm gonna say is JavaScript number one. Uh, JavaScript is in the top five. All right, all right. So we, we, we do this um, Family Feud style. Yeah, there you right? go. Yeah. I, I didn't get an X. No, I'm in the yeah. top five. Um, yeah, I, I'll, I'll, we'll just do the top three here. JavaScript is number three. JavaScript is number three. Number all right, three. okay. So I'm, I'm good there. Um, I would imagine PHP would be up there, even though I don't necessarily think of it as a programming language. Uh, that's your first X. It's not. It's oh. not in the top three. We're doing the top is, three. Oh, is it in the top ten, or you don't have the top? Yeah, I didn't write that oh, down. I, I, All right. Uh, let's see. 
Okay. You um, expect everything from me. Well, what is on an iOS? Is it uh, Swift? What, what is iOS stuff written in? I think. Well, there, there's a few different ways. I think, but uh, I think Swift. But okay. But no, do you want you want me to give just give you number one here? Okay, what's number that, one? Because number, number one, I that's why I'm giving this caveat of it's broad. It, it's HTML. <laughs> HTML. So the, the hypertext markup language, it's a markup language, not a... Huh. Yeah. All right. Well. <laughs> yeah. So like, like I said, Still it's broad. But, but I, think, I think number two, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's something that I know we've done some content on here uh, w- with the DevPro uh, side. So it's definitely something that, uh, that I think people, a lot of people are using. So give you give you one more guess at it there. Uh, oh, man, I get a guess. Um, so a programming language that we've done a lot here... Uh, shoot, I know that we did, um, well, we haven't really done any Perl, which is useful. It's Python? It's Python. It's Python. All right. woo <laughs> Yeah, and we did, uh, I actually hosted a show, uh, with Justin here where we did a show about, uh, well, I, we did a whole course on, um, NumPy, numeric Python, mm-hmm. which was the most confusing thing I have ever witnessed in my it's life. Just numbers and a giant snake. Apparently. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I was waiting the whole time for the snake game, and it never came. So I, that's apparently the uh, the later stuff. But yeah, I mean, I think that that's just more saying that um, these are the, these are some of the things that if if you learn these, you can get a job today. You know, yeah. there there's still a lot of you know a lot of need for for just having that basic HTML knowledge, and and that's where it kind of breaks out to, I think we're beyond just looking at what is the IT sector, because if you're in marketing, if you're in PR, if you're in any kind of advertising, you need to know some some HTML at this point, because you're expected to be the person that maybe maintains the website and, and is putting content up there, or even um, formatting how things are going to look um, on different forms you're posting them on. So uh, yeah, not a program I don't know, you know, per that's, se. But, that's uh, tough, though, because like it's not enough to know just HTML anymore, right? Uh, CSS, CSS, yeah. CSS, you know, cascading style sheets, that has so changed the way that web pages are written that when you, you used to be able to go to a website, and in your browser, choose view source, and you'd be able to see the HTML source code, and it made sense. Yeah. Now, it's all these different custom CSS tags, and unless you download the style sheet, none of it makes any sense. And even with the style sheet, it's a nightmare, so that that would be tough. And JavaScript really changed things. So web development is, I, I'm going to say it's a lot harder today. It's, it's a lot more powerful than it used to be, but it's a lot harder between those and PHP and, and all the Node.js stuff that's going on. It really does make things a lot more complex. Python... You know, you can write full-fledged applications in Python, but also as far as, like, scripting and automation, I can see that being really powerful. Any any system administrator, you know, you, you might not even consider yourself a, a developer, but if you're doing scripted deployments and pushing out software, Python can be a really handy thing to learn. So that's, it's not a bad top three. Yeah, and I, and I think it's one of those things where uh, if, if you looked at this list a year from now, it's, it's probably going to be three completely different things. Mm-hmm. But I think where... Were more so with Python and JavaScript. If you if you went out and learned that today, and, and even self taught yourself, when you're transitioning then to whatever the next language is that comes out, it's going to be a lot easier because even across those different languages, there's there's concepts you you just start to understand and how object oriented programming works. And so, um, you know, I don't think it's smart to say, well, you, you know, Python might not be the thing next year, so I'm not going to waste my time learning it because uh, these these tend to be built off of each other and, and, and kind of evolved that way. But um, So I'm not going to quiz you on, on this next one, but I've got the, uh, the 10 hottest developer jobs of 2017. And so this is based on uh, what people are looking for in the job postings. Um, so this it, information that was mined from Indeed, Indeed.com. So it's, it's basically looking at that saying, what skill sets are we asking of our developers? So uh, the number one, and this, this one actually kind of surprised me, is uh, Ruby developers. Ruby. All yeah. right. Now, you know, Ruby, uh, just to provide a little insight uh, in, in Ruby on Rails, uh, I've always heard that that's a great, like, learning language. If you want to learn how to do something, it's got a lot of framework. But I know that there are a lot of Ruby exploits that are out there and that software written in Ruby is, you've really got to pay attention to security while you're developing it. So that can be a bit of a challenge. I, I didn't think it was growing anymore, but I guess maybe it's got a big enough install base that they... They flagged that as number one. Yeah, I mean, there's probably a uh, huge demand for Windows XP 
uh, system administrators as well, <laughs> because that's just what all this stuff uh, is on from the past years. But uh, but number two gets back to what you had guessed earlier. It's uh, mobile app development, and mm-hmm. they and they list that as that's uh, what the money is. Well, I mean, I guess we're <laughs> yeah we're talking about iOS and Android here. So Swift, Objective C, uh, and Java uh, being the the main things that they're looking for in that one. Um, and then uh, kind of going down the list, uh, information security software developers. So that's not really a specific uh, language at this point, but just more the type of developer they're looking for. And number four, the Internet of Things development. So yeah. those, those refrigerator developers are in high demand now. I, I like how the uh, the buzzwords were well represented oh, in, yeah. in everything we've talked about, right? So we, we had cloud, we had Cloud's IoT. Number six. Oh, cloud's cloud developers too? number oh, okay. six. I, I jumped the gun on that one. Uh, <laughs> we got cybersecurity. What, what other? Is there anything with synergy? Uh, well, UX and UI uh, <laughs> oh. developers are number ten, and so if there's if there's a buzzword, uh, that that could be the one. Yeah, yeah. User experience. Yeah, that's <laughs> that. That's not so much a programming language as it is like a an art. An it's, art it's like yeah. feng, sh- feng shui, right? Uh, yeah. For for websites. Yeah. Try <laughs> arguing with the UX developer about something, and it turns out it's it's there's a lot of opinions, but a lot of it's just based on on user research. So uh, yeah. uh, what works in, on one um, UI can be completely different. Uh, than something else. Try and get two UX experts to uh, come to the same conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to the comments uh, on this uh, on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking specifically of who in the office is going to be commenting, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so the last uh, list I have is the now the, this is not the developer side, but these are just the hottest uh, IT jobs for 2017. Again, this is from uh, Tech Republic, which I think is a part of uh, CDNet. But um, all right, number one, uh, and and this this is based on uh, the the jobs with the the uh, largest demand right now. Again, um, from Indeed. Uh, number one is data scientist. Which, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean that's that's not yet a buzzword, but it probably well it's I, getting close. I think it, it it sort of is because it's it, if you said big data, right? That's a buzzword. Everybody yeah. hears big data and no SQL databases and stuff that companies are finding that they have massive troves of data. And if they could data mine and find patterns in there, then they could really change the way they do business. There's there's customers they're not reaching. And so you need a, a data scientist. Who can look at all of that data and find out what what's what? Uh, you know, on on Reddit, there's a subreddit called uh, is it "Data is Beautiful" or something like that, where they have a lot of people who post stuff, and it's really interesting what they come up with. That like certain flowers sell more in certain months, and it's not necessarily based on the seasons of the flowers, but <laughs> that it's data that if you had it, you could really make good dis- business decisions. So I, I can see that one. Yeah, and another one that's kind of along those lines. Uh, it's, it's down here at number five on this list, but it's analytics manager, uh, and because that's the same thing. I mean, for for a lot of companies, I mean, ours included, the the website is the business. And so understanding how people are interacting with that and being able to take that data and and, um, and, and tie it back, I guess, to, to the UX and, and uh, you know, help people navigate through that, that sales funnel or even just find help on your site if there are already customers. Sure. Um, you know, that, that's, that's a big thing to, to have someone that really understands those analytics. Go ahead. Oh, and, and just performance-wise, right? In this day and age of cloud, you might find that you've got uh, a large amount of users in Japan. And so you know, all right, I need to deploy some servers that are over in, in Eastern Asia so that they can get a, a better experience on the site. So we can find a lot of that if we've, if we've got the analytics and we know how to read it. Yeah, and I skipped a couple. Entry-level engineer, number two. Um, UX designer, number three. Uh, QA manager, not the, the sexiest one in, in the in the bunch, but yeah, definitely important. one of the most important ones on there. Um, uh, what I thought was interesting is number uh, number six is Salesforce developer. So actually, you know, one, one specific product, but a product that, I mean, I don't, I don't know what the percentages are these days, but you know, thousands and thousands of companies are using. Yeah, when you talk about a a company's salespeople, that that's how they make money, and so I, I can see why that one would rock it up there. And you know, in the past, it was applications like PeopleSoft or SAP that did that, and now Salesforce kind of dives in and and takes care of a lot of that. I I'm not a salesperson. I, I don't think I could ever work in that type of yeah. of. Uh, 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 situation. It, it's just it's a very different type of job. Uh, you have to be a people person, which you know, I'm not so much. Um, but from every salesperson I've talked to, they've all said that Salesforce is like the greatest thing they've ever had. And, and so to hear that, it, it makes you recognize that you know that that's very important to people being able to sell. Yeah. And so this this list a little bit older. I mean, it's looking at basically 2016 data to predict the the big jobs in 2017. Um, I'm curious your thoughts. I, I think. Uh, between 
talk about Russia, talk about North Korea, and and uh, you know nation states actually as hackers and things. Now I think cybersecurity is going to be something that moves up on this list a lot. What did I say? Security analyst is number yeah. seven. Um, any other things you can think of that would be um, you know kind of future things maybe to look out for um, yes. if someone's getting into the so new I, field? I think if you are. E- even if you're if you're not brand new, like if you are brand new, this stuff is easy to decide. But even if you're already out there in the field uh, and you're you're looking to improve your career or to make sure that you've got uh, um, job job protection, security. Uh, yeah, job, job security. security. There yeah. we go. Uh, and we said security a lot. Yeah. <laughs> we certainly did. Uh, but the two big areas, uh, one's going to be cloud, right? Because cloud solutions are efficient. They save companies money. They give you scale. They give you availability and resiliency that you couldn't necessarily afford in your own data center. Cloud solutions are commonplace now. And so if you haven't already adapted that skill set, that kind of a job, somebody you can work with, with Microsoft Azure, or Google, uh, Amazon's AWS, Google Compute, or, or whatever, then, then you need to get those skills, right? And then on the security side, cybersecurity in general, right, being able to do Red team or blue team, pen testing, incident response, data forensics, that stuff, really, really critical. There's jobs out there like crazy. So if you get those certifications, it's easy to find jobs in those sectors, especially if you have security clearance with the government. Like if you have uh, secret or even top secret clearance, uh, the, the jobs are just all over. They'll, they'll fall over themselves to hire you. It, it's that, that in demand. Uh, but if you combine the two, if you're doing cloud security, now, <laughs> now it's off the charts. So, so those are some really big growth areas in the system administration side. And then on the developer side, it's the, the web application languages and the mobile application languages. Those two are the ones that are growing. You know, mobile apps are a huge, multi-billion dollar industry that's not going anywhere anytime soon. A lot of people are replacing their computers with mobile devices, and that makes it all that much more important for people to have those. So um, definitely easy to identify areas to, to focus on. Yeah, I know you, you travel a lot with just an iPad Pro instead of yeah. a computer, and I definitely want to let people know that so they can you know find the ways to hack you and, and know what, what you have. Yeah. Actually, I've, I've been traveling with my Chromebook a lot lately. Mm. And, and if you think about a Chromebook, it, it's just as a web browser. Yeah. That's it. Uh, but, yeah, I did just travel with the iPad because you could take a laptop, but you, you don't get great battery life, yeah. and and there is that risk of if somebody steals my laptop and I've got data on there, it, it's secured, but that's a problem. Sure. Versus if I just have a, a iOS device, it, it's somewhat limited exposure. And if everything you have is in Dropbox or in you know uh, yeah. different services like that, you're you're, you're pretty much protected. Well, uh, I think that's uh, probably a good spot to to go ahead and wrap up for this one. You got anything else you wanted to? Talk about this time uh, around. You know, I, I know that job numbers aren't necessarily the uh, the most exciting thing in the planet, but it is good to know where the industry is, where things are going, and to kind of keep our, our finger on the pulse of the. It's good to know if you're looking for a job too. Yeah. <laughs> you want to know what what's coming, and not not just what's out there now, but uh, kind of what skills you should be focusing on, I guess, mm-hmm. for the future. And you know, this this podcast will never be uh, an advertisement, but. I think IT Pro TV is kind of a good spot to go to, to pick up <laughs> the knowledge on a lot of these different things, especially the security track. But we've talked about DevPro a little bit and, and uh, you know, a lot of those languages that, you know, even if your goal is not to become a programmer, mm-hmm. uh, knowing a couple languages like that yeah. is it's just a, a great, like, feather to have. Well, you know, our, our saying is a, an IT, a good IT pro is always learning, yeah. right? That you know, when you learn a skill, it's only good for three years before it becomes obsolete. So you've got to be constantly learning. And the moment you start to stagnate, it, it can be disastrous for yeah. your career. And you just ask every Novell administrator that you've ever met that it, it was difficult for them to make that transition to say, all right, I, I need to start learning Windows NT or, yeah. or Linux. And, and a lot of them just chose not to. So yeah. definitely stay on top of the new stuff. Yeah, and stay, stay ahead and keep up with the stuff that – isn't the big thing yet because good chance it will be uh, in the near future. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, definitely give us a like, uh, give us a review if you're watching this on iTunes or listening on on TuneIn or, or Stitcher. Uh, it's those reviews that really help us uh, kind of get this podcast out as we as we look to build it up. But uh, thank you so much for watching, and uh, also be sure to subscribe. Subscribe uh, that helps. Uh, subscribe to the RSS feed there, uh, so you can get the content all the time. But uh, Thanks again for watching. So go ahead and wrap it up for uh, the IT Pro TV podcast. I'm Peter Van Rysdam. And I'm Don Pazette. Do we do that here at the end of these? I know, I know we do that uh, on the other know, shows. People don't know who we are. All right, cool. That's, <laughs> that's who we are. It probably says it below us, too. And I'm yeah. Ricardo Montalban. <laughs> Until next time. Thanks Enjoy for watching. Enjoy your Corinthian leather. <laughs> I can't think of a better ending.